Why hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with me, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 295, that's 295, thanks so much for tuning in. As per usual, if it's your first time listening and you want to share the show, you want to get it out there to a wider audience, make sure you share it on all your socials. If you're listening via the podcast app, make sure you leave a five star review. And if you're watching this via the lovely you know, medium of YouTube, smash that like button, hit subscribe and leave me a comment for any sort of questions you may have. So um, it is now what week two of the UK lockdown, right? Week two, we're in week two, week two, week two. Um, so far, so good. I'm sure everyone else is um, going through whatever they're going through and struggling how they're struggling or thriving how they're thriving. I'm not too sure how people are dealing with this situation, but unprecedented issue um, that's kind of affected everyone the world over. I'm sure, you know, you're probably sick and tired of hearing about it, but, you know, it's a big deal. So probably have to speak about it for a tiny bit before we carry on more interesting bits of news. But yeah, it's been an interesting um, thing to see, isn't it? How people have been split in the middle especially politicians somehow somehow i'm not sure it's mostly an american thing i don't think it's happening in the uk for the most part there are some people who are like espousing you know um anti-tory rhetoric but for the most part it's not really turned into it's mostly turned into like a a question of ethics right or worldview whereas in america it seems to have really split people in terms of their political alliances right whether or not you've got red tie or blue tie really um, influences how you view this whole pandemic do you think it's real do you think it's fake do you think it's a government's fault do you think people are overreacting are people not overreacting enough there's a real weird kind of um confusion going on around there and for everyone i've heard so far speak about it especially north america wise they've said that there's been a big difference in opinion in terms of the news that you get from the kind of cnn side of things and you get from the kind of fox news side of things when it comes to the same issue so there's a lack of clarity and of course if you live you know in a country such as you know america where for the most part um questioning authority and kind of going your own way is sort of like baked in their dna isn't it right that's part of what they are they don't really i don't know maybe from maybe yesteryears there might have been a time in the maybe 60s or something or in the 70s 80s i'm not too sure there must have been an era where they sort of held up certain papers or certain um, news organizations to be the bastions of truth but nowadays especially you know with the rise of with the rise and fall and the rise again of alex jones and various other youtubers who are providing alternative news platforms it's really difficult for there to be one unified kind of um not vision but interpretation of things right um which then leads to this whole fractured way of dealing with things but then on the other side of it on the flip side it's quite confusing how they're dealing with things right they're not really necessarily dealing with it they're not moving in a unit but the fact that they have these independent states right that can actually enact different sort of measures based on what the governor or the mayor kind of puts into practice allows them to sort of move without having to wait for the overall government to kind of decide what to do right you can sort of like get get a kind of head start on issues especially if you live in a state where you know they have a higher population of older folk it probably is beneficial that you have a governor who number one wants to do something right wants to make a difference wants to make a change and number two because you're a state you get to be a little bit more nimble you can move around a bit right um Whereas it feels like in the UK, for the most part, we're sort of like twiddling our thumbs in one way and then we're not, right? So it, it went from being nothing going on, right? It went from Boris telling us, you know, quite epically that he was shaking hands with everybody and anyone and everyone to now suddenly he's doing um, meetings over Zoom, right? With his camera facing upwards. That's like a standard uh, trope of the older gentleman, isn't it? unable to use a webcam which is bizarre really considering like you know in most companies or most places that you work in you're going to have to use some sort of video streaming platform on one occasion right it's not the first time you've used it i would imagine so i don't know but it's just for funny that they all have that same sort of angle it's just like staring up at them from the bottom upwards right it's staring into their nostrils which is you know always a bit of a pretty sight to check out but yeah we went from you know shake everyone's hand and be everyone's friend and kiss 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 to now suddenly you know he's holed up somewhere uh still recovering but i read somewhere that supposedly he recovered in three days which i'm not sure if that's true if that is true that that's a record-breaking time and judging by his general you know the way he carries himself and his general you know physical uh 
his physical makeup. He doesn't look like someone that would recover in three days. Let's just say that. But you know, he has. So it's just been confusing to see from the outside. Really, it's interesting to see how people are reacting to it. A bit confusing, a bit weird, but. Hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, we see a little bit more of improvement. The peak starts to... Pro- it's a weird thing, though, because we're hoping for a peak, right? But we all know what the peak's going to bring. The peak's going to bring more misery and more death on people who, you know, are already suffering. Or some people who haven't been touched by it are going to be touched by it, more so than likely. But we're all hoping for that peak to come so we can just get over it. Because that's what it feels like. It feels like people are kind of over it already. Obviously, I'm assuming it has to do with the weather. Most places around the world, it is spring, it is summer um so it can be difficult to just be inside all day long without the possibility of going out and enjoying the sun going to the park hanging out with friends blah 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 blah. that can be really difficult so that's probably adding to the overall tension i can feel and it's bubbling up a little bit it's bubbling up i can feel people are getting a little bit restless they're getting a little bit twitchy um we've kind of and again it's for us in england and so for us in, well, in england yeah for the most part it's only been this is only the second week the sec, you know, second day of the second week right so it hasn't been no time whatsoever and we're already struggling so imagine what it must be like what's going to be like at the end of april when we're still going to be on lockdown so um very very confusing and very interesting times but again just interesting to see it from the outside perspective kind of view what's going on most of it is way above my head I'm too dumb to understand what exactly is happening, what's the case of it. But, you know, the best you can do is just follow the instructions from the experts and try your best to kind of keep out of harm's way, really. Um, my local kind of supermarket here has in, in, enacted a really clever measure where they, you know, I guess most supermarkets are doing the same thing. They have barricades um, to kind of uh, guide people around where to kind of stand in the queue. Then they have people, then they have a lot of markers on the floor to make sure that you're all six feet apart, two meters apart, whatever it may be, which is pretty cool. The only thing annoying about that is there's always that numpty, there's always that ignoramus that always has to kind of walk up to the queue, look at it and see, oh my God, there's so many people in there. And then they always ask you, there's always one person, there's always somebody that does that. Walk up to the queue and just ask the question, oh, is that the queue to go into the shop? Yeah, of course it is. What else would it be? Would we just be standing out here for free, just hanging out, right? Twiddling our thumbs, whistling into a mask. We're not doing that really. We're obviously here to shop. Um... It's an interesting way of going about things, isn't it? But that might be uh, <laughs> just a, a makeup of some people. Like instead of just queuing and just seeing where the queue is, just going, just following it around and looking where it is, and it's like, and then deciding where you when you see the end of it. Like you know what, do I want to go in or not? There's no need to ask a person. We're not going to give you any. But I guess it's 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 the kind of person that would instead of googling something, they'll ask you a question. That's the sort of same sort of makeup I'd imagine. But that was a little bit annoying. Like you know, just 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 look at the look at where I'm standing. Of course, you know. I'm not here waiting for my dad to pick me up, do you know what I mean? So, bloody hell, but yeah, what can you do? Um, But so far, so good. Everyone's kind of behaving. No one's kind of going crazy, which is surprising to see. I thought there'd be a lot more looting. I thought people would be jumping into JD Sports and, you know, trying to steal grey and navy tracksuits, but probably not. Not for maybe another couple of days, hopefully. But I have seen, actually going into the first topic so we're going to get into some stuff that i thought was interesting over the week as per usual um loads of cultural stuff some streetwear things some stuff with music you know the usual standard malarkey but i want to touch on this one thing that i saw online that i thought was really interesting and a really clever article because it i've been thinking about this ever since the, the video dropped right you remember gal gadot and that whole imagine thing right um all these kind of A-list, B-list, C-list, D-list, whatever range celebrities that they may be, will all sing and imagine into their, into their, you know, mobile phones or whatever it may be, in the hopes to kind of give us some sort of hope, some sort of um, good vibes going into this, you know, pandemic. And it went down like a lead balloon, in it, right? So it didn't necessarily garner the reaction that she thought it would garner. So, or they thought it would garner. But it made me think about just the... Uh, lack of um i don't know what it's called you term it uh the lack of a, the lack of self-awareness really when it comes to celebrities in these moments and especially in moments like this right when for the most part we're all locked in we're all on our phones we're all on social media we all have access to the news um and all that sort of good stuff right you have much you have a lot of information coming at you right to digest that can kind of allow you to kind of glean what's going on you don't really need to understand too much about you don't need to be the foremost experts in you know uh 
disease and viruses right but you can kind of understand what's happening by piecing together bits of information from various different sources right so this guy comes on there this woman goes on there da, 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 and you can kind of figure out what the what the what the general vibe is so you'd think if you're a celebrity you'd kind of be able to guess the general sentiment or kind of you know gauge the general sentiment of people in general from just being on social right um so to sit there and again for the most part most of these celebrities who are singing are or you know they're not necessarily you know singers in their day-to-day life i think maybe apart from a few of them so there's this weird idea that you know for an actress or an actor to go on a camera and say hey i'm gonna sing to you to give you good spirits even though i don't sing myself because just the mere sight of me is gonna make you smile is wow that's like some sociopathic shit isn't it right and this article from New York Times really encapsulated a lot of my thoughts that I kind of had on it and really kind of uh, did a much better job of explaining it than I have. But again, it's it's just, for me, it's intriguing because I just think, especially with everything, especially with everything that's going on, you just, you, you would think that now would be the time for really, 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 um, now would be the time for, not, not a sensitive approach but just kiddie gloves when it comes to being a celebrity online right you don't want to boast too much you don't want to show your fancy cars you don't want to show you getting dressed up in a million different amazing outfits or your latest haul or what some brand sponsor sent you You just want to keep it a little bit you know casual but some people don't want to do that but this article on new york times really explains it better than i could it's called uh, celebrity culture is burning on new york times the pandemic has disrupted relations among the masses the elites and celebrities who liaise between them it's written by a lady called amanda hess and i'll read it to you now this is the following um america's in crisis but the celebrities are thriving they are beaming into your homes reminding us to stay indoors and stay positive we're all in this together when I watch these selfie, these selfie, sorry, when I watch these selfie public service announcements, I find my attention drifting to the edge of the frame, to the understated wall mount, more wall molding, visible behind Robert De Niro's shoulder, to the craftsman, to the craftsman's beams on Priyanka Chopra's balcony, to the equine um, wallpaper framing Zoe Kravitz's cracking fireplace. Staying home is my superpower, the Wonder Woman star Gal Gadot reported from her walk-in closet. Ryan Reynolds urged his fans to work together to flatten the curve from within his rustic loft. When Jennifer Lopez posted a video of her family sheltering in the backyard of Alex Rodriguez's vast Miami compound, the public snapped. Well, we all hate you, said one uh, respect, uh, representative response. Among the social impacts of the coronavirus is a swift dismantling of the cult of celebrity. The famous are ambassadors of meritocracy. They represent American pursuit of wealth through talent, charm, and hard work. Which made me think that maybe this whole thing, especially the backlash that they're getting, because I don't think there's been a lot of UK-based celebrities who have kind of done things, you know, who've kind of gone, who've kind of posted something that was a bit out of touch. Or, yeah, not really. I don't think it's happened. So my one fear in that might be the fact that we have... Um, we have a royal family right so we know so that kind of uh meritocracy thing is in place is ingrained in in british society because we have a class system right um whereas in america there's this idea that if you pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you make a lot of money and you become rich and famous you too can sit for instance like a donald trump character in the uk would never be as well regarded as like a obama just because of the level just because of the class divide right even though you know trump could say you know i've got this background i went to school you can't exactly buy yourself into a class in the uk as you probably can do in the us you could probably maneuver and kind of jump into different social groups different social settings um meet different powerful people just based on the kind of moves you make and the friends you have whereas in the uk it feels like you there is a bit of a truman of a truman show ceiling on how far you can can and cannot get which is some which, is, which in some parts is quite um it's it's quite uh what do i say what would you say is um there is a good part of it is there is positive aspects to that right whereas you don't necessarily you know exactly where you stand right you know your place which kind of sounds mad to say but there is there, you're not you're not in doubt you're not kind of uh, fooling yourself as to where you kind of are on the totem pole you know exactly where you are and it's up to you to decide if you want to go higher you're going to encounter this sort of you know mess this sort of reaction you're going to encry- you're going to encounter this sort of person these sort of situations but if you want to maintain where you're at and just bring your friends up at the same level as you you can do that too 
you see that a lot with um this new generation of uk hip-hop acts actually they're doing a really good job of it i think the past generation especially mine um that came up during the whole garage and grime scene there was a very there was a bit of a a feeling of trying to acclim trying to acclimatize to the environment that you were in right uh trying to change the way you speak the way you carried yourself how you dressed the music that you make the stuff that you're into just so people could feel comfortable around you but now it seems as if like the kids coming nowadays they have this idea where they don't care if you feel comfortable around if you're not comfortable or not they're just going to bring their friends up with them and carry on right they're just going to have their friends you know head to toe in black wearing a balaclava you know putting gun signs and gang sign signals and just doing their thing because that's what they come from that's their world that's their life and they want to represent that as true as possible so that kind of helps i think with the with with that kind of detachment from celebrities where like you know you don't because everyone's really around you because everyone is who they are that kind of the only I can the only one I can think of that's really, that really get idolized that like people kind of fawn over are maybe musicians and sportsmen in the UK for the most part. I think so. It's not the same. We don't. I don't think people would. Would people faint if they saw someone from EastEnders on a train? I don't think they would. They'd be excited to say hi, right? It's an EastEnders actor. Oh hey, I know you. You're on my favorite show. But I don't think they're gonna faint. Whereas it feels like you know in the US, if someone saw someone from Modern Family on a train somewhere in New York, they'd be going Goo Goo Gaga, right? So maybe that's the whole difference behind it i'm not too sure but let's continue anyway uh but um the famous uh are ambassadors of the uh meritocracy they represent america's pursuit of wealth through talent charm and hard work but the dream of class mobility just dis dissipates when society locks down the economy stalls and the death count mounts and everyone's future is frozen inside their own crowded apartment or palatial man's mansion the difference between the two um, has never been more obvious. The hashtag guillotine22 hashtag 2020 hashtag story is jumping. As grocery hours turn bare, some have suggested that perhaps they ought to eat the rich, right? And there's a video, of course, of Jennifer Lopez posting a video. I think, what's that? Is that one of her kids or someone on a hoverboard in a garden, Thank right? You, sir. Hold the tray. Hold the tray. Right. Hold the whole tray. And Enjoying the themselves. What's he doing? Is he pouring his dad a drink or something? <laughs> okay, allow okay, that. Um, so when Pharrell, so the article says, so when Pharrell Williams asked his followers to donate to aid frontline responders, they virtually grabbed him by the pants and shook him upside down, telling him to empty his own pockets first. Kirsten Bell, Dak Shepard have been outed as landlords, as Ellen DeGeneres lounged on her sofa, video chatting with famous friends, the comedian Kevin T. Porter solicited stories from service workers and Hollywood peons who had experienced run-ins with DeGeneres, whom he called notoriously one of the meanest people alive, Jesus Christ. So, it, it seems like it's open season, right, from celebrities. It seems like the purge is going to attack them first. And again, it's just their own fault, especially the US-based ones. Instead of just keeping calm, keep yourself under the radar, and not sorry, attracting too much attention, there's this constant need to kind of... Which kind of makes you think, isn't it, right? Hey, what about it now? They always say, oh, um, the reason why they're always posting or they're always kind of, you know, making up some sort of gimmick because by and large, if you're a celeb, you need to kind of always be, you know, front and center to kind of keep your livelihood going. But maybe this whole epidemic or pandemic show has proved to us that the reason why they're doing that or the reason why they're dancing in front of your, in front of your phone, um, sort of doing a dancing monkey thing is because they kind of crave the attention more than they do the actual fruits of the attention. That's the major part of it. Because that's basically what is being famous, right? Now, right? It's being recognized for a thing, right? Being the kind of well-known person in your field of expertise or something, right? So if that's the case, then it would be only natural that you would care more about people knowing you are alive, people giving a shit about you, right? Relevancy, you hear that a lot. It's the one word you hear a lot of celebrities say often, right? Relevant, 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 relevant. It's something that keeps them up at night. They don't want to suddenly be that person that no one remembers where someone's like in a restaurant for going, oh, I know you from somewhere, like doing that. No one wants that, right? It's their kind of nightmare. They want to always be known. So that kind of drives them, um, which is why we have the Gal Gadot sing and imagine into her, <laughs> into her smartphone and then getting her friends to do it as well. Just imagine that phone call if you didn't want to do it. Ugh. But anyway, it continues, right? Um, so the film Parasite in which the poor 
uh, South Korean family cleverly conned its way into a home where the rich one has been converted into a well-worn social media retort whenever celebrities offer glimpses inside their own mansions inside their own maze mansions sorry the reference succeeds uh, partially because so many super rich people have such blandly similar minimalist homes definitely true um it must be a very hard time to be famous celebrities are not among the very wealthiest in america jeff Lopez is reporting that five is a fraction of the percent of jeff bezos but they are the ones who are tasked with liaising with the general public offering precarious access to lifestyle celebrity culture glorifies them not just for their performances or personas but for their wealth itself their blowout child child um, birthday parties their car collection plastic surgeries and property ownerships from lifestyles of the rich and famous to my super Series 16 and keeping up with the collections the ability to watch or hate watch this spectacle of excess has functioned as a bizarre uh, appeasement for inequality but this compact rest on the celebrity's ability to seem to move easy between the elite and the masses to be aspirational and approachable at once and under normal circumstances they are accustomed to receiving accolades for using their platform to raise awareness quote, unquote, i love that in the services of bland initiatives for the public is good but our awareness has never been so easy to rouse and misuse celebrities have captive audiences of traumatized people who are glued to the internet eyes darting towards training topics for clues for processing the unimaginable horrors of looming just outside and instead are finding madonna bathing in a rose petal bath student bath yeah that was a mad one so stunts like gal Gadot's crowdsource famous person cover john or john lennon's imagine are tone deaf in more ways than one most uh, uh most of these people cannot even sing their contribution suggests that the very appearance of celebrities is a self as if a pandemic could only be overcome by star power alone which is that's the one in it that's the one that really gets you you're like cool you're gonna do the thing fair enough in it but to enlist just a whole bevy of actors just to kind of and it's not even like this is a i don't know i think that song would have been all right right to kind of send out as a message if this was i don't know a volcano a terrorist attack due to some sort of weird action that trump took right against the middle east right and they retaliated and you know god forbid they you know fucking launched missiles into the middle of manhattan or something fair right your voice isn't being heard this guy is a tyrannical leader he's doing what he wants he's putting our lives in jeopardy blah 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 fair enough sing imagine and get it out there i think people will be all right with it but this sort of thing it's like what because i guess and it also comes off the back of people suddenly getting annoyed by the whole stay indoors thing right so everybody's telling you to stay inside like we get it we know we need to stay inside but unfortunately some of our some of, i guess some general population people are like look our lives aren't our lives are quite are kind of framed around or um influenced heavily by the stuff that we do outside of our workplace right whether it's meeting our friends going to work every day right even the stuff that we don't like to do in terms of workplaces that informs a lot of who we are as people you take that away from us and suddenly staying inside isn't so appealing because we don't have the benefit of you know i don't know hanging out with your maid or with your kids or in a huge place or manager somewhere which again is bad to say because you know not it's not it's not as if everyone that has a bedroom has a house with more than six bedroom is living a life of blissful happiness but come on man like if i was a celeb and i was summer world and i would be just i would be keeping it i keep my head um underwater or you know below kind of the sight of fear the sight of vision so no one can kind of like hate watch me i just want i don't want any of that energy at all and it continues here it says one of the ironies of the moment is that though we feel less like stars than ever um they seem to feel more like us or at least what they think is must feel like to be like us degeneres is going stir crazy quote unquote for having to stay inside her enormous home katy perry has lost track of the days that she spent inside her enormous home madonna has elevated celebrity um delusion of a kind of performance art in a series of oddly professional instagram videos this is definitely true with massive lights in the back suggesting a perhaps dangerous concentration of staff members in her home she can be seen undergoing a bizarre healing process at her personal health clinic and bending over a typewriter in a kimono uh, pontificating about the social effects of the virus for madonna performing for the public and holding fans um in fraud is yet another luxury gone for now she says in one video it's a place is disturbing sensation of normalcy the audience is in is in her house it's not amused by me she says later from the bath she concludes that the covid19 is a great equalizer but again, I recommend you check it out. It's a whole entire article that speaks about it. I think it really encapsulates my thoughts really well on it. And um, yeah, it's it's a bit disturbing to see. But again, I, I just that need for a t- like, come on, if if you're if you're Anthony Hopkins, do you really need to be on 
Instagram, making videos, telling people how bored you are. Really? You're a legend, man. Like, you're a legend. You don't need to be doing that. But, you know, I don't know. Definitely check it out, though. It's called Celebrity Culture is Burning. It's on the New York Times site now. But I'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out yourselves. Next one here. Let's quickly jump into some other stuff. Um, RA put a really good feature, actually, um, kind of talking about the impact that this is having on the electronic music scene you know something of interest to me and they did a really cool piece here um highlighting some of the promoters who have kind of been affected by it and what they're doing to kind of and how they're you know how they're approaching things uh now and again it's an interesting thing to think about because i think um i wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily say obviously you you would you'd be hesitant to say it's a good thing right for this happen and all and all, but there is a part of me that's like once this does settle down and things get back to normal, there has to be some level of change, even if it's just personal. Of course, people are going to have their own personal changes that they kind of enact, right? Whether it's a hobby you picked up during this time, um, whether it's a skill you're learning, whether it's the kind of deciding to kind of get rid of some toxic friends, people are going to do some changes right they're going to enact some kind of change in how they approach life i'm definitely sure this is going to change people's view on how they approach like yeah how they approach life in general right maybe they take life too seriously maybe they're not decided to make that big move ask like that person blah 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 a lot of a bevy of list of options so i think it's only right for a scene a subculture a community to also do the same thing right to kind of take a look in the mirror and be like you know what do i actually want to be the same person once this thing sells the tilt downs and starts back up again because we have to be we have to understand or we have to kind of accept that the climate isn't going to be the same once things get back get back going right we're not going to have the same clubs we're probably not going to have the same people working there um the same artist might not be around right it could for everyone saying clubs could leave and clubs could close down there might be some djs and some producers who might just like pack it in and be like you know what i had a good run i'm just gonna get a regular job now and just you know whatever play whenever i want to play later on so the, the whole climate could change the whole landscape could be completely different from what it is so i think it's a definitely a time especially uk wise i speak you speak for my home um nation uh predominantly that there definitely needs to be a different kind of approach in terms of how we and how we kind of in how we consume club nights or how we consume you know electronic music or dance music in that kind of environment there needs to be a different approach to it there needs to be a bit more of a insistence on kind of getting in local young promoters to kind of cultivate a vibe a scene around a particular club and then using the bigger names to kind of um you know give it the necessary bump but not basically relying on the big names to kind of uh pay for that club to stay alive or pay its rent i think the rent should be paid via the local promoters local dealers are out there doing good things um allow them to have a platform especially the bigger clubs x or y there's no reason why they should be having mega big people coming in playing right every single week for residencies going on for six to 12 weeks they don't need to do that they could easily have um residents playing um because it's in a real real hot spot it's right in the middle of old street in shoreditch they're always going to have crazy foot traffic it's very popular um it's popular especially within the university students that live that live and study around that area um you don't need to have you know six weeks of uh this big dj doing the night right? you could just have predominantly you know resident djs playing and then kind of fill in the gaps here and there when you have a bit of a dead week with the big name to kind of make sure you guys aren't losing money but it definitely needs to be more of a an, more of a what do you call it more of a an appeal to get fresher newer more interesting uh relevant site specific you know it presents locale wise comparisons coming in because that would be pretty cool right to see people who actually live around the area bringing their friends down right that making because i know for me when when you go when you go abroad and you happen to bump into somebody who lives and breathes the scene and they take you to a club that you haven't heard about and then you catch a vibe there usually it's not because of you know the person playing around the deck it's not because you oh look that's good you answered it's because the the club that you're in the people that are in that space they sort of represent what that space is about and you could suddenly kind of and even though you might be in the middle of fucking ukraine you can there's some sort of similarity between you guys right like oh cool this this person's like me right they're seeking out this really dingy dusty warehouse by somewhere in the middle of kiev to go and rave instead of going to the kind of glitzy bar because they know this represents them much more or represents their scene a lot more and again for outsiders too it's a far better representation of what's actually going on right you'd hate it imagine being like from berlin 
and you come to London to rave, happen to go into X or Y or, and you just see the same person that you would have saw at Burger and play. It's not really a fun experience. You, know? you, you would want to see somebody that actually is from the cult, is from that city, is from that scene, um, has some sort of tie to the local community. I don't know, that, that, that would make it more interesting than just going to see DJ Hale, who you saw over there, playing here again because he's a big guy that everyone's going to play. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, this article from RA kind of explains a lot more better than I could. It's called Perspective from the Scene via Promoters. Um, I'll read a couple of them for you just to kind of get a vibe of what's kind of going on. So it says here, um, party crews discuss how they've been impacted by COVID-19 pandemic. And this is Buttons from Berlin. They had a really good mix, actually. I've, I've played... Did I? It was, it was, it was it an RA mix? It must have been an RA mix I played recently. They're really, really cool. Um, definitely check it out. But they said the following They said, um, We voluntarily cancelled our March 20th party over one week prior because it seemed like the German authorities were dragging their feet on, the manda on mandating preventive measures. This is the first time we've called off our monthly uh, parties since uh, June 2016. And we've halted the planning of our program until the coast looks clear, which is mad, isn't it? Right? Because I think that was, that was, I remember one of the best things I remember about promoting, like, regardless of what was going on in the month, regardless of how what's happening in your life, there was always a date in your kind of calendar where you knew that you had to program a night, design a flyer, market it, uh, get, you know, um, tell your friends, uh, you know, get the lineup sorted make sure you do the kind of decorations at the club when you get there sound check all that good stuff right would happen on that day and it would be something to really savor especially during that especially at that on especially during that time when i was doing them i wasn't going out as often as i am now right i probably didn't have the means to i was or i probably was working a lot more i was working a lot more of a strenuous job right and you're kind of on that kind of lower level you're kind of putting in a lot more hours than you might do when you're kind of mid-level um or a senior person i'd assume right i don't know but i do remember it being something to look forward to and really i don't, I, can't, I can remember maybe one occasion where we had to kind of cancel it out right beforehand but usually you never cancelled it you took every single date that was given to you you did every single date that was that that you were kind of a, that you agreed upon earlier because of course you know you didn't want the person you didn't want to be the person to call up the club or the bar owner and tell them hey i can't do it because you know you know as soon as you say that you're going to be off the list of people that they can kind of rely on and then they're just going to give the next person who's waiting in the queue and for sure you have to be aware that there's a whole line of people waiting to kind of take your spot so you could never afford to cancel a, a night at all um so they continue here they said um the water is choppy the situation is hitting close to home hospitalized uh, family members in italy i was working in a front line buttons residence mad alba continues to log extra hours to the surgeon in viventi's new clean which is mad in it madness and like many in our scene we are dealing with the loss loss of work and loss of income like our new venue about blank, which put up a call for his help last week with a crowdfunding camp, which is definitely weird, isn't it? How could a big popular club like about blank be at jeopardy of kind of closing? Obviously, I'm assuming it's it's duly it's partly based to the pandemic, but there is maybe a conversation that needs to be had about how the clubs kind of function in terms of businesses and as to, in terms of how they kind of handle their finances. If that's kind of an or or having to say, like how is a club that's you know for a country that for the most part you know is kind of propped up by tourism especially kind of techno tourism how they're not able to kind of have anything in reserves for like a bad time is really weird isn't it like it doesn't make any sort of sense again it's not the kind of under, about black isn't the underground club it's not something that you wouldn't have heard of right anytime you go to berlin look at the listings they've always got some sort of big dj playing there so it's not you know it's not uh it's not like a a newly opened club or anything it's something that people are aware, very aware of but I don't know. There's, it seems to be happening quite often now. Again, I'm not sure what's happening. Financial. I'm not sure if the the landscape in Berlin is changing, and more private investors are coming in and taking up all the land. But that's a question that needs to be definitely asked about what's going on in that in that regard. But our article continues here. It says here, in effort to help out some of our most valuable family members, um, those who are freelancers in gig economy, we've joined the Berlin Collective Action, a nightlife emergency fund. We currently call on the passionate. Uh, on those passionate about Berlin nightlife who have steady income or are financially secure to join us in supporting those in need, which is a very cool idea. I think they're kind of crowdfunding people's salaries in general, taking a little bit from everyone and then kind of divvying that to people who kind of are responsible for putting on the nights that they enjoy, which is a really cool socialist way to kind of do things. And again, I like the idea that they're taking initiative on themselves. They're not waiting for the government to give them handouts. They're kind of putting out to place and making sure everyone's in a, is in a good position. 
Um, and then this next one here, so Half Moon New York says the following, the COVID-19 has reaped widespread effects on curators in New York City as we no longer have access to public spaces to bring our community together. As the outbreak intensifies, we've been put in public health and safety first, meaning that we've postponed any consideration of even smaller intimate in-studio events such as in-studio live streams and programming. Residents are now encouraged to submit pre-recorded mixes to be played during the episode of time, which is, that's an interesting one. I've seen a lot of live streams, right, where it looks like there's a whole studio set up i think the ones where someone's just doing them in their house and sending them into someone to kind of play or their or the, I, I guess you could do it where if someone gave you their stream key you could stream on boiler room from your own house and it'll be fine in it but i'm seeing a lot of live streams especially from the defected guys i saw one with michael bibby and somebody else who else was in his house might have been um hot since 1982 or whatever his name is right but there's a whole production people involved in it, it looks like and again i'm not too sure because a lot of from my experience a lot of people that dj are quite proficient with technical and audio equipment right so they, they could be this idea that a lot of them are just hiring their gear and then setting up themselves and then just getting it sent back again right but still you're having someone come in with a gear who's you know we know that this virus can live on inanimate objects for three days or something like that um, then you're having other people come into your crib you're probably gonna have a couple of drinks maybe you have a little bit of smoke it doesn't necessarily feel like people are taking it that seriously when it comes to the electronic music thing now again i think live streaming from your own house right with your own decks with the webcam looking at looking at your kitchen window cool in it you're not gonna hurt anyone but doing the whole studio thing or going to an actual venue which i've seen people doing i've seen a fold doing the same thing right doing a kind of live stream via fold on a sunday just doesn't seem like the best um decision to make especially during these times and again but i know the need to kind of make sure people don't forget about you and to kind of give the years platform to play but i just don't know this is the right thing to do but a lot of people are doing it but i'm glad to see someone has also kind of um seen the you know why that could be a little bit of an issue in the half moon guys inside not to do it and they continue here with the important social distancing and so quarantine the impact has isolated us from our community and disconnected us from the people who are integral to helping us do our work properly with no community there is no half moon but that's i think is the same for everyone isn't it i think all promoters now are realizing just how just for the, especially for the ones that spam you on whatsapp right or spam you on facebook messenger they're now realizing how important it is to actually cultivate real long-standing relationships with people so that if you are in hard times or if you do kind of get behind in payments or if you kind of have to um or if you kind of you know lose your ass because everyone's refunding tickets suddenly those people that you actually treat like community members are not just as like you know transactions they can now be the people that can maybe support you and give you money or support or you know donate or submit money to your patreon wherever it may be right those people can do that but when you treat them like a transaction and you keep spamming them with facebook messages or with email newsletters saying it, you've, it's only 90 percent, 90 percent the take is gone come and get your thing like no one's going to listen to you that way right um says so, yeah but luckily as as an online radio collective finding old creative solutions to connect to people regardless of their location has always been one of our reasons to being currently we're working internally to understand the music community needs and how we can show up uh, for them during this time whether during a thorough video workshop amplifying our residents releases or fundraising if you have the means you can support us through your patreon as as we get better to serve our volunteers and residents affected by the uh, affected economically during this time so that's a very cool message there then from netherlands radio radius says the following it's very unclear if we'll survive this summer we have a high rent in amsterdam and we are renting a state-of-the-art art studio state-of-the-art sound system from sweden there are still a lot of bills to be paid but our expected income has completely vanished which is you know what most people are kind of surviving when it seems like by the looks of it but it also forces us to rethink our existence as a music platform luckily we're well connected with developers and designers and have always been building a brand online too with live streams and playlists which is something i would like to see a little bit more a little done a little bit more right um maybe there could be an avenue for more live stream radio stations in a kind of similar vein as an nts but maybe with more of a video element to it that allows local dealers to kind of get on you know on a bigger platform amplify their sound and it also allows promoters um and people like that to also see who they can book based on the views because a lot of these people are just you know they're quite binary it's going to book you based on the views you get on youtube which is fine or the likes you get on instagram cool but if there if there's a kind of a plat if there's various different platforms they can go on and you can kind of command and then you could use that as a way to kind of gauge your metrics 
right and say hey agent hey booking guy look look what i did on this platform right i just sent my viewers over here and i got the highest rated live stream in the last six months or whatever maybe and then then from there they may be able to find new talent that way that might be a good way to do things because then again you're seeing the person you're seeing what they look like how they carry themselves behind decks that could be a really cool way but also could be another option for clubs themselves to maybe offer a different avenue for revenue maybe allowing people to kind of rent out their spaces to do their live streams and their radio uh, or quote unquote radio shows in their club when people are not using it during the day um uh, outside of kind of the standard club events that could be a good way to go about things um it's to sort of offer up different solutions but it's sad to hear you know that a place in netherlands um or in amsterdam specifically that has a high you know high amount of tourists coming in during you know during the season especially during the festival season they are you know they get charged a high amount of rent there's not some sort of collaboration or some sort of deal with the local council to enable kind of the entertainment industry places or especially the nighttime economy places to kind of stay open or to kind of pay a more of a subsidized rate that the, all those conversations are going to need to be had especially with all the clubs that are going to kind of crumble or are, are going to be unable to sustain themselves during this period you can't have you can't have you can have some places disappearing fine through lack of balance in the books whatever but you can't have the whole scene disappear because you know the government isn't willing to give them any kind of bailout or whatever maybe and you know you, you could argue these places are probably more important than some of the other places that are getting bailout money um but that's a conversation of another day um it says here the second paragraph says um we're now building an online radio video platform sorry to make our program online reconnecting with partners enables a radio station to, to form new collaborations both national and abroad wall stream dj sets talks and interviews which definitely i've mentioned before we're bringing our sponsor um Kun, Kornoit, and absolute with us to compensate DJs and artists with these tough times as well and on the platform of our community can donate to both radio radio and charities uh, but we will need more to survive getting a bank loan could be an option but we can't forecast anything since we um it's not known if the shutdown will take one two or six months which is definitely true but again i think it needs to be a little bit more of a not career, not kind of out of the box thinking when it comes to these clubs and these places why some of these venues don't have regular scheduled talks and events where they kind of fly in big guests or especially people that are going to play later on in the day you know most DJs are bored in their hotel room not doing anything you could chuck them an extra hundred quid a couple of uh, maybe 500 i'm not sure how much it's going to be to get them to kind of you know certain bar was played in a fold right Maybe he's not a good example, but let's say um no Richard Horton played at Fold during his album release, and you know he could have easily done a little discussion at Fold, you know a few hours beforehand, right? Talking about what went into the album. He's a geek, you know he's a geek anyway. He loves talking about music. He loves talking about technology. He could easily sit there for forty five minutes, pick up five hundred quid. You could charge everyone a tenner before they get to the event, and suddenly you've got another revenue stream. And everyone could do that in their own respective fields. Everyone's got somebody in a little scene who could put in enough of a crowd to justify them putting putting a couple of microphones in, in the mixer and just talking over the sound system anyone could do that but again there's needs to be a little bit more of a because again i think if you're going to have just the biggest top 10 djs in the ra playing in your venue at least you should supplement it by allowing the local community to do these sort of events workshops and all this sort of stuff you should give them the kind of onus to kind of do that on their own you know um uh, on their own dime or you know just say hey we give you the first couple of what events free and we kind of split the door or something that that would be a good way to go about things and again would would go a long way to kind of cultivate actual community and not just you know transactions that you kind of harass through email and then the last one here just to kind of round things up this is a babes right i'm pretty sure it's pronounced bbz from london it said the following um from the dawn of club culture black queer and trans marginalized people as a whole have been the innovators and the fuel but when shit like this happens we're always impacted the worst which is mm, a bit of a loaded thing to say i think everyone's impacted the worst i don't think it's mainly a one subsect of people or people how or, you know how you'd like to be represented as or what you kind of ascribe yourself to and if anything as well london is probably the best place for for just not giving a shit i think for the most part i think queer knights have a hard job keeping out general public coming in as opposed to they have a harder job putting on the actual event for the most part right people love going to queer nights people love going to gay nights even more so in the, in the uk so it's not as if it's just affecting one segment of the population it affects everybody you know what i mean especially if this is your career this is your livelihood right you're you're a pa or you're a receptionist or you're an event organizer or an event booker or or 
or you know you do the accounts for some label like this is going to affect every single person you're the delivery guy you're the courier it, like, it doesn't it doesn't really uh, delineate against you know sexual or gender representation it's not really about that at all but you know I understand where they're coming from, but that's not it at all. But here you go. Uh, the persistent uncertainty in the current situation has, has thrown a lot of us into a very precarious situation. And when dealing with folks already on the margins of this capitalist society, it's even more critical. Mamas, these guys are on the mama snake vibe, innit? Um, in the immediate future, as a collective, we're trying to prioritize our mental health and well being as individuals. That way, we're the best place to meet the basic needs of one another housing, food, safety, mental, and physical well being. This is a madness, isn't it? Um, nightlife is only is the only stream of income for a lot of us so it turned our worlds upside down for the foreseeable future so we're calling on the assistance of our allies and the wider club community to check in with innovators and use our privilege where possible that is an insane paragraph and i don't i don't even understand what none of that means but yeah um everyone's hurting um some more so than others some it seems like they're kind of slightly enjoying it but yeah um Da, 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 da. definitely check them out a lot of really cool um opinions here i'll put in the show notes for you guys to read yourselves it's called perspectives from the scene this is from the promoters definitely check that out i think it's a really interesting article boom 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 let's move on what else we have here oh dana white is so desperate why yeah this is um this is an interesting one i don't really understand what the deal was with this right so as i'm sure most of you are aware or those of you are um, mixed men mixed martial arts and mixed mental arts all the time mixed martial arts fans or fans of the ufc you know that the much the longer wait it could be a tony ferguson fight was meant to happen in a couple of weeks but judging by what's going on at the moment it's probably going to get cancelled or get postponed now most sports around the world nba basketball nhl nfl uh soccer football whatever we call it cricket even the F1, which, you know, they're kind of dragging their feet about it. Most of the, you know, the big kind of ticket uh, sports out there have paused their season or they're kind of reviewing it and kind of hoping that things get better. I think the only one that's kind of outright cancelled has been the National Football League here in the UK and maybe the Women's League. I think that's about it. Everything else is sort of like postponed until, you know, they kind of see what's happening. I think the Olympics have been postponed until next year. So has the Euros, um, but nothing's been outright cancelled avoided right but everyone's sort of like you know pausing things for them for the time being but the ufc isn't right the ufc is super desperate to make sure the ufc 259 249 happens with a khabib and tony ferguson headlining because of course you know there's been four other occasions where this fight is due to happen and due to people missing weight or getting injured or whatever it may be the fight hasn't happened right so i can understand the law of getting it of putting it on because you know for tony ferguson and khabib we all know it's going to be an amazing fight tony ferguson probably represents the only credible threat at the moment of the rest of or the rest of people that are available he probably he represents probably khabib's diff, most it, most difficult fight right he's probably his most toughest opponent and from what you heard from khabib he's taking him very seriously but dana white has gone on this crusade which i don't really know what why he's doing why he's kind of adopting this kind of siege mentality we're going to get the job done thing and prove the haters wrong because this isn't like an issue where the commissioners, the commissioners or the local authorities are unwilling to give UFC a license to run this event because they think it's a barbaric sport. It's not because some governors kind of stuck their nose in and sort of like sully our reputation as you know as a fan base. It's because of a cataclysmic event, right? That we could never have foreseen has has kind of impacted all of our lives, and we're all kind of having to maneuver and adjust to the situation but Dana White seems incapable of a kind of understanding that and he seems to be I don't know who he's fighting against I don't know who he's trying to prove wrong but somehow he wants to kind of make this fight happen under any circumstances and the thing problem I have with it is number one obviously it represents a level of desperation that's pretty you know sad to see because somebody at his level from what he's achieved and where the UFC is at the moment you know every time I hear him speak he tries to he always kind of reiterates the need to kind of legitimize UFC, right? And have it not really fought as as these barbarians fighting in a cage, but actually see it as a sport, see it as something that kids can actually pursue as a career path, um, see it as a kind of an intellectual pursuit in some regards as well due to the commentary and the analysis of people that are involved in it. 
so you get the feeling that there is a there is a kind of need to kind of distance themselves from the kind of the old the old days right but when he acts like this you can't help but think that the only reason why he gets the he's allowed to talk the way he talks and carry the way he carries on because he's president of the ufc no one else will be able to do the same thing that he is able to be do he's a, he's been able to do because he's essentially kind of um, lay the groundwork of how somebody should act in that position, which isn't necessarily how they should act, but he sort of kind of made people come become accustomed to it, right? So much so that you hear people on the MMA subreddit say, "Oh, he's our goof, right? He's our goof. We love him." Which, you know, you can you can love who you want to love, but I just don't think he represents. He is like it's very professional way to represent the things. And then secondly, is it a, is it is it a greed thing? Are they trying to put this fight on under any circumstances because um, they've paid out on it or they've kind of cashed in the checks that they would have received from sponsors and if they cancel it or they postpone it, it's probably going to cost them more than trying to figure out a way to put it on is it is it that or is he just desperate to get some pay-per-view money in because if he doesn't get that in the company's completely going to fold i don't know what it is but it just doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like this is a great way to go about things there must be more that's happening behind the scenes i'm not aware of but from the outside looking in it just makes dana white look like an absolute spanner and it makes it and it and it kind of reinforces the idea in my opinion that in order for ufc to really progress and go to the next level they need to find a different president they need to like he's definitely taking it as far as he's taking it now and you could definitely you know write and hold you can make a whole documentary about where he's taking the ufc from and where it's at, at the moment but in order for it to kind of really go to the next level it needs clear minded um you know long game uh so i don't know kind of like you know chill people to kind of lead it so it's not this i don't know fly by the seat of your pants sort of approach to it and not num- there's no better example than this article here from the mma fighting that says dana white on ufc 249 i said this fight is going going on and it will right so this article from ufc says the following um with uh, the UFC 249 main event in jeopardy, but then anyway, it's determined uh, that the show must go on. With the UFC lightweight champion Kevin Novak and the Medov stuck in Russia due to a travel ban because of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, his fight against Tony Ferguson may not happen on April 18th as scheduled. The UFC has already tapped uh, Justin Gaethje as a potential replacement, which is nuts, isn't it? Because they essentially put all these fighters' health at risk. They are always going to argue and tell you that oh they have the best doctors and never had any sort of in, any deaths at the in the cage and blah 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 blah, but you are just kind of setting yourself up for a failure, especially with people that surround the UFC, the light guys, the the, the people that are going to be working, the medical team, the people that do all the catering. You're just going to put and again maybe if they do the approach that the soccer teams are trying to think of, where they kind of put everyone into like it's called like a World Cup Olympics village sort of place that can maybe work right ahead of it. But they'll have to do it now, right? Because if the fight's happening on the 18th, you need 14 days to clear the quarantine. So it'll have to happen by Wednesday, the latest. They'll go to the venue and just stay there until the fight happens and then stay another 14 days and then leave, I assume, right? Um, but just not the right way to kind of go about um, training for a fight. I'd imagine for the fighters involved in it. Um, the UFC has already tapped Justin Gaethje's potential replacement to face uh, Ferguson on short notice, but nothing has been signed yet. Regardless of the Makamedov's uh, participation, um, Gaethje stepping up to take Ferguson, the UFC president promises that he's still going to put on a show in less than three weeks' time. The challenges are every is that either every time I get something figured out, he said, I wake up the next day and the world has completely changed again. Um, everything that I worked hard on the day before, me and my crew has now fallen apart. It literally just happened to us again today. I woke up today and Khabib is stuck in Russia. They just shut down all the travel in and out of Russia. But again, like a preparation. If you knew you needed him in, you should have flew him into the place. I don't know, whatever. I woke up this morning and the whole fucking world changed again. So back to the drawing board. And we're figuring this right out now that we're speaking about it right now. As we're speaking about it right now. I have people working on this thing as we speak. Listen, I'm absolutely fucking relentless. And I said this fight is going on and it will. I just don't understand the rel- the relentless nature of this. Like, why does this need to happen now? We've waited long enough. We can we're happy to wait another six months, a year to have this fight. Let the guys chill, rest, get recuperated, spend time with their families, and then once everything is settled down, put the fight back on again, and everyone will be happy to do it. But it, it, it begs the question: like, even if he does put this on, what is he going to charge people pay per view for a fight happening in three weeks? with no people in the arena is that what he's really going to do is he going to justify how's he going to justify charging people a, a tick a pay-per-view uh pay-per-view price for that like would you pay 50 dollars to see 
could have seen Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje? Not really, would you? Maybe it could be Ferguson. You could probably have them fighting in a car in a in a in a in a, in a, in a what do you call it in a car park somewhere and stream it on the webcam, and people will probably pay that amount sixty dollars or hundred dollars, whatever maybe. But Ferguson and Gaethje, not really. The card isn't that impressive to kind of make you want to do that anyway. I I don't really understand it, man. I don't get it. But anyway. It says here, um, the biggest concern facing White right now is finding a main event that could come close to replacing the highly anticipated showdown between Khabib and Ferguson. He's also taking considerable criticism for planning to promote the card um, with almost the entire world on shutdown. Despite any reservation about the health and safety of the staff, a closed door event, White says nobody involved understands the potential risk and wants to move forward. You. So, okay, what's the risk? He says here, we got overboard everything, he says, all the time. Think about this in the 20 year history. That I've been involved and before me, there's never been a death or serious injury. That's crazy. Chilean can't say that. We go completely overboard with health and safety. Even before the coronavirus, the health and safety part is some nothing new for us. It's now just trying to be able to maneuver as the world continues to freak out and lose their mind over this corona stuff. <laughs> the world is not freaking out and losing their mind over some corona stuff. It's an actual thing that people are dying from. This guy's insane. All my fighters want to fight. My staff wants to work. Everybody who's involved in what I'm doing is absolutely willing and able to do this. Of course they are because if they say no, you're going to probably fire them, innit? Uh, the thing is with fighters, when they are with me, they're getting the best medical attention they could possibly get because they were home alone by themselves and whatever the situation is. I've reached out to everybody, not just my employees that work for me, but my fighters too. If them or a loved one can become ill and needs me, I'm here. I'll do everything in my power to help and take care of them. Oh, look, they know why, Jesus Christ, right? They've given always, um, the fight will go on. I just don't understand what the need is for it, man. I just don't understand it. It's a weird desperation. There probably is other things at play here. Maybe he's involved in the mob or something. I don't know, but not my business. But definitely, um, I don't know who's going to watch it on the 18th. I'm probably not going to pay the pay-per-view amount to watch it myself, personally. I'll just catch the clips online later, but it's a sad state of affairs. I would have hoped they would have just postponed it and put, you know, put the fire on for another time people will be happy to wait i know i'll be happy to wait anyway but instead he's kind of plowing through his things that just don't make sense but anyway what can you do let's move on here one more what else we want to talk about da, 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 da. oh an update on bugsy balone yep well done to him or get well soon he was involved in a pretty horrific crash actually that happened um was it a few weeks ago he was riding some sort of quad moped bike thing through the streets of Bury and ended up colliding with a car at a junction somewhere but thankfully he's recovered pretty well um judging by the video it looked like his whole face was kind of peeled off um and you know I don't know man on one side it's a good thing that he's he's great um and he's kind of get back on a mend put he put an Instagram post out late um I think a couple of days ago or maybe yesterday kind of informing his fans that he's all he's all right um but obviously, on the other side, there's the, there's the thing that, you know, everyone's on lockdown and he's out riding a moped with no protective gear on. You know, not obviously the best example to set. But I also like the idea that UK rappers have kind of moved up a level in terms of um, celebrity status, where they kind of don't get the same amount of flack that they did back in the day. If someone else, if someone did this, you know, back during, I don't know, um, what was that radio, what was that TV show with the music videos on? If someone did that back then, you would have got absolutely strung all over the papers, right? He would have been absolutely torn to pieces. Now, again, maybe Bugsy Malone did get torn to papers. I don't read any broadsheets or tabloid papers, I don't know. But people seem to be quite mellow in their kind of outrage in terms of what he'd done because it was quite serious, right? Because, you know, he could have effectively severely injured the people that are in the car that he hit too, right? It's not just him, right? Obviously, there's a kind of, you know, the mental effects of it as well, the PTSD that comes from it that trauma all that sort of stuff that's happening it's just it's a bit of a madness to kind of be involved in but again glad he's all right but the video of him kind of falling off his bike is a nutty thing i think i should should i actually play it maybe i should play a little bit of it let's see here but this Watch is on graph lad on graph yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a sport bigger than lights show him off the floor <laughs> side by side dude it's fair isn't it do, do your thing you're you're a rich and famous rapper in england i don't know there's not many of them around so but you see him doing this, and then he zips it. Oh, that's not actually it. Yeah. Oh, that's not a good test. That's not a good test. Oh, he's going forward. He 
you see him splayed out all over the floor, which I'm going to stop there and not play the whole thing. But he doesn't look in the best shape. But luckily, we put out a post just the other day, actually informing everyone that he's in he's in good spirits. Everything is going well. The caption reads the following. They tell me I'm lucky to be alive, but although I sustained serious injuries at the time, I lost consciousness, so I don't remember much. What I do remember is a non-stop love and just want to say thanks for all the well wishes and prayers you lot got me through. You lot got me off guard. You lot caught me off guard, sorry, with all the support. Lockdown ain't easy because boredom causes the craziest problems, but be safe regardless. But I don't know, man. What kind of boredom would lead you to, you know, jump you know, jump on a quad bike with no protective gear and end up splayed out all over the floor? But isn't it? it is what it is, isn't it? But again, glad he's okay and he recovered. So from talking. Yeah, his nose looked completely wrecked, isn't it? But he looks he looks pretty well considering all things considered. He should be a lot more mash up than he actually looks in it. Which you know, maybe speaks to his resilience and his level of fitness, but Jesus Christ man. It's probably rich guy problems, isn't it? I guess when you've got that much money and you've got that much time on your hands, there is a part of you that's like you just need to go out and do something, isn't it? You just can't stand being at home. I understand it, but look at that. Look at like when motorbikes are involved in crashes, it's just it's absolutely obviously it looks worse than it is because obviously it's uh, one of those it's a quad or was it tri bike whatever it's called with the two wheels at the front so it looks a lot worse than it is but he f he must have flew off that at breakneck speed and smashed into the windscreen or or maybe that's what actually injures people right when you fly off of it you hit other things so maybe he was lucky enough to just scrape across the floor and not hit like a wall or a fence or a lamppost or something i don't know but bloody hell man well, I'm happy he's okay for the most part because you know 2020 has already been a bit of a sucky year. The last thing we need is one of our more prominent rappers to be, you know, um, in a far worse position than he is now. But yeah, big up him. Glad he's okay, and hopefully, um, this is a lesson for those of of you out there who have a uh, more disposable income than time to just chill the fuck out and relax. But anyway, what do I know? Um, that's an hour of the show. Thanks so much for tuning in as per usual. Um, if it's your first time listening, of course, um, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. If you listen via the podcast app, of course, um, share that, give it a five-star review. Uh, make sure you follow me on all the socials. I'm posting a lot more, of course, because I'm at home and stuff, so that helps to get the numbers up. So check me out on Instagram, excellentzinger, all one word. On Twitter, too, excellentzinger, all one word. Find that in the show notes description below. And um, until then, I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Um, you'll be able to find another update of the show in your library. Uh, until then, be safe try and stay in if you can if you can't stay in then be smart about it innit? <laughs> i guess that's my only advice on that one but yeah take care be safe